Okay, welcome back and uh, good morning wherever you are or good afternoon again. So, uh, we discussed in the last class uh, the uh, review little bit of phase transition, then I talked about two things I left out and uh, not in great detail, but students should know about them is the uh, sol gel transition, which is a very common chemical uh, industrial phenomena and percolation, which is again very, very common in, uh, in, in, in uh, electrical uh, engineering and uh, these things. Percolation is very common in natural, well, as I said, in sand bed and many, many other places, flow of water is dictated by percolation. And uh, then we talked about that uh, the Landau, little bit revised Landau theory, the Landau's great uh, uh, free energy landscape picture of phenomena. And then we talked about that um, uh, first order phase transition is where you have uh, a metastability uh, as, as given by hysteresis or given by the fact that you know in, uh, we all call that we all say that water freezes into ice at 0 degree centigrade or go you go below 0 degree centigrade, but that does not uh, quite happen. Uh, if you have a very pure water, uh, you can make it in droplets so that no uh, impurities there, then that remains in the liquid water till minus 40 degree centigrade. Mercury and gallium, you can super cool, we call them super cool to about minus, uh, you know, below their melting by the freezing point. 50 degree centigrade, 60 degree centigrade. Even in upstairs in clouds, the water, uh, the temperature has to go down uh, before the really cloud, the, the, uh, the droplets form. And uh, this is what is already in uh, Van der Waals theory in a kind of Van der Waals loop. And we know in a metastability in magnetic systems, you, you switch the field in the other direction. But uh, nothing happens, the spin still point, magnetic moment still point in up in the old direction. You have to uh, turn a, uh, your field quite a bit before they turn around. So, metastability means that system is trapped in a minima, free energy minima, and that can be explained very easily from Landau's picture that there the in a first order phase transition, the old minima remains. So, even though new minima, deeper minima deeper minimum has appeared, the system does not uh, know how to go around, it does not know even that probably knows that there is a new way of doing it, but it um, does not know. But what happened? System always undergoing fluctuations and these fluctuations uh, is a way of exploring the thing and as we discussed in the thermodynamics that these fluctuations must be positive for a system to be stable. That is why specific heat uh, stability, specific heat greater than 0 is a condition of uh, thermodynamic stability. Isothermal compressibility positive is a condition of mechanical stability. Essentially, these fluctuations are we consider in a stable system in, a, in a, the fluctuations around a harmonic surface. So, free energy can be that is why the how does it come because if it is a probability of a fluctuation of energy that is Gaussian e to the power minus delta e square and what do you have in the denominator of delta e square? You have the specific heat. So, uh, so if I talk of a fluctuation delta e then that goes as uh, normalization constant e to the power minus delta e square by C v. So, if I have a, a harmonic thing, then this C v is uh, fluctuating, then what is the probability of fluctuation delta x? If this is x, then it is again e to the power minus omega square delta x square. So, omega square now you compare the two, uh, the frequency is C v, 1 over C v. So, omega square is 1 over C v. So, this a system, a stable system is in a bound in a harmonic surface. So, right now what we are having then? We are having this kind of situation. This is harmonic, but this barrier is large, the barrier is macroscopic. So, barrier is microscopic, very important.
So, how does the system go then from here to here? This is the question. In second order phase transition, it does not arise, second order phase transition does not have metastability. It has just large scale giant fluctuations appear with the divergence of compressibility and speed and you suddenly get these um, um, the system split into two, okay, ordered and disordered like in magnetic transition. You have ordered state and disordered state and a system choose between one of the two. System choose between sorry, system up, up spin and down spin and that is a beautiful phenomena called system. Uh, um, uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking, but we, we are not going to go into that right now. We are going to do it first order phase transition. So, this is the first order phase transition. We will do second order more detail later, but something extremely important to a physical chemist and to nanomaterial synthesis of, of more importance of late now uh, in to material scientist and to physical chemist. Or, or in the department I am in solid state and structural chemistry or the next my department uh, chemical engineering is very, very important that one understands the nucleation phenomena. And this is something I can tell you a small story. Once I was visiting Japan and I, I gave talk and I was the first time and I was not comfortable with Japanese food and uh, I was very hungry after the, my talk lecture. So, there was an Indian student who was my ex student. I was uh, not my own PhD student, but a student, uh, another faculty member. He was uh, very eager, sent me many mails, he wants to see me. So, I remember it because after the talk, I was very tired and uh, he took me to his, I do a long talk. In Japan, sometimes you give two hours lecture. I went to at 6 o'clock, I went to his office and I told him first before you talk, you give me some food. So, he gave me a couple of banana, but then he was so told me sir I wanted to see you because you saved my life. I said how? Bolo you taught that course on nucleation and spinal decomposition and here when I came they were doing something on a surface which was actually nucleation and they did not know anything about it and so but I knew from your class. So, I could explain the experimental phenomena to them the formation of islands and then they and they were ex and percolation and all these things and they were extremely extremely happy. And the first paper that I could read with, uh, write within a short time in Japan, it would take a long time sometimes to write a paper, especially by uh, foreign students. But uh, uh, this guy was so, so then I realized that this guy was doing a surface scientist. So, all the critical phenomena, critical exponent, relation group that you teach them is not useful to bulk majority of material scientists and to physical chemists or organic chemists. But nucleation is very important because nucleation is more important than critical phenomena to this group of people because they face that all the time. A, a, a physical chemist is an experimental physical chemist. So, so that I, I, I always the preempt. I, I, I before critical phenomena any other things. I teach nucleation and I, I, I want students to learn nucleation. It's a beautiful phenomena. Okay. So now. How does nucleation then? Then what happens actually in this um, in this system uh, when you have this uh, phase, my old phase? In that old phase, the way it goes over to new new phase is that a small embryo forms. So. This embryo is a nuclei that a nucleus of the new phase and that tries to that tries to grow. So, in this landscape, this is somewhere here. So, this guy tries to grow by fluctuation, is a spontaneous fluctuation, and it goes, then it comes down again, then again goes. Finally, it goes here and it goes over, and then there is an explosive growth. So, the process of the phenomena of an embryo growing into a metastable phase is nucleation. So, nucleation is the process, let me write down. Where by a, uh, a, an embryo of the old phase. 
undergoes growth by activation and this is spontaneous, it has activation energy and we will now calculate the activation energy. So, this is the new creation, it so when a first order phase transition happens not by any kind of uh, big large scale fluctuation, but the small fluctuation that goes. So, the system is destroyed from within, from inside the system is destroyed and new phase comes up, you know that is how ice melts, that is how uh, uh, water goes into ice or water droplets form. All the first order phase transitions or if you have a magnetic transition, but in the presence of a magnetic field, then you this again this some localized spins get ordered from the disordered system and if you have held on the upside, then up spins will get clustered together and they form a nucleus or an embryo and then that membrane will melt and go, but finally it will grow, one in, in, they are growing in many places, but one of them will grow and reach to the critical, this critical size and then it goes over to the other phase. So, that is the phenomena we will describe now in a little bit more detail, ok. So, we will now uh, do the following thing that we will do nucleation, I described already thermodynamics from nucleation. Uh, and the, the Becker Doring theory, then we will do some things very, very nice things which is uh, 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 Zellovich uh, treatment of the collection of Becker Doring. By the way, the Becker Doring is an extremely important thing, this is the thing which is described in many cases, physical chemist might know. Uh, you know, Lindemann thing, then you no know, enzyme kinetics, you know, Michaelis Milton, and all these things they are all very similar things, they are connected to each other. Um, so, someday if we can get time, I will talk about that, ok. So, then classical prediction limitations and all these things we will do. So, we will start with then the uh, nucleation, ok. Uh, is a phenomenon observing in the large kinetics and phase transitions, and it is from within. Uh, so, there it must proceed by nucleation because macroscopic free energy barrier, it cannot, uh, this I already told, uh, this barrier is macroscopic, it cannot go otherwise. So, it must form from inside. So, nucleated, so new phase has to be nucleated within the old phase that I said, and uh, this there, however, this process itself has a barrier, and that is a nuclear barrier, and that is a beautiful physics, and that is called nucleation barrier. and. Uh, that is the one we will now con consider, ok. And then an example as I already said that uh, water should freeze at 0 degree centigrade does not, it is uh, can be super cool to great, great much below, much below minus 40 degree centigrade, water remains water, water does not, pure water does not freeze at 0 degree centigrade, that because the embryo needs sufficient driving force to grow, it does not grow, ok. And uh, this is the existence of metastability is due to the, this is a beautiful, beautiful sentence actually. This is all taken from our book uh, that uh, the existence of metastability due to the presence of barrier forced by nucleation. Okay. Now, uh, while pure water, pure water does not freeze below 40 degree minus 40 degree centigrade. Helium and uh, sorry, gallium and mercury does not below minor, they go 50, 60 degree centigrade below their freezing. However, you know in refrigerator, uh, ice forms, you know, minus 5 degree centigrade or minus 3 degree centigrade, 10 degree centigrade. The reason is that the, it, there are surfaces and there are a lot of impurity. So, that is called heterogeneous nucleation. Heterogeneous nucleation does not face that barrier. And uh, there is the, the way you do the heterogeneous nucleation, of course, you have to do homogeneous nucleation first, then you include the surfaces and show that how heterogeneous nucleation takes place, ok. Uh, so, this is a completely smooth way and you, and one interesting thing is that you are having a very super, and you might have done in physical chemistry experiments that you have super cooled it and you have the container below 0 degree centigrade. Now, you scratch it with a, and we have many of us have seen that. Uh, or in liquid, you scratch it with a rod, glass rod and you can see crystallites appearing, 
So, the heterogeneous nucleation and this is because this is one of the telling and uh, great example of the uh, of the role of surface tension and surface tension is something we want to uh, study in this lecture later. Uh, but right now we will define surface tension as the energy required to create a surface. So, if I have to create a surface of ice in water that is a different surface that requires uh, extra energy that is energy surface tension quantitatively is defined as the energy required to create uh, an unit area that you have read in your in your high school even that surface tension, but that same high uh, surface tension plays an extremely important role. How do now how do you go to do the theory and we are now going to towards that development of the theory ok. So, the basic idea then that we have an embryo growing in uh, in this in this old phase embryo of the new phase is trying to grow and we have to find out what is the energy ok. When I grow something then it gains energy because this the free energy landscape is like that. So, this is the new phase the embryo phase. So, when it is here it gets free energy it gets a considerable of free energy say the free energy per unit volume I define as delta G V. So, it gains that energy however, it creates this surface and it has to pay for the surface. So, total delta G is then sum of bulk energy which is gain this is minus negative plus then surface energy which is it has to pay. So, the, uh, these things and uh, some of you might already beginning to see what is that. So, this is the metastable gas and in this case this is metastability in temperature versus density and this is the critical point ok. Now, so the as we again and again saying if gas going to liquid then this is the coexistence, but it in order nucleation to take place it must go down and I am now going to uh, tell you why is that ok. So, basic equation is this is the equation ok. The basic equation is that if I want to create a nucleus of radius r in a old phase then I my volume is 4 pi by 3 by r cube this is 4 pi by 3 by r cube and then delta g v delta g v these are great thing and delta g v is the difference this is the delta g v. So, this is the I gain so this negative in front I gain this much I gain however, I have to pay energy. So, how much is the surface we know surface 4 pi r square and gamma is the energy per unit area. So, 4 pi so this is the total amount of so in order to create a fluctuation of size r this is the energy that I have to pay this is the total energy cost so, energy gain and energy loss. Now, what do I do ok I go here and I ask for a new pay ok. So, let me now see delta g r Now, one is energy gain and this and how does do they look? Let us look at this, these are cube and these are square. So, if I plot this delta g r against r, then this thing is negative, these are cube, this thing is positive ok. <laughs> now, surface tension is actually pretty large. So, what happens? This part wins in the beginning. So, that is why you go up the hill and come down, but when if by some fluctuation it becomes large then it starts getting the advantage that this is larger because these are cube ok. So, then what happens as a combination of these two a maxima appears and this maximum is the, this maximum is very important thing in the language these are star critical radius this is the critical barrier 
So, in the folklore of phase transition, this is a very important diagram that is telling you how nucleation takes place. This is very important for nanomaterial synthesis and every case. This one diagram called Baker Dorin diagram that when I write free energy of creation, a flux, uh, embryo of size r, then I, this has this structure. Now, how do so again combination of two factors one is negative, rapidly becoming negative, other is positive and then you get that, then how do I do that? Then next thing of course, and this is the critical radius, R star, I have to find the expression for R star now and critical barrier, I have to find an expression of critical barrier, okay, let me do that. How do I do that now? We have done it many, many times in this class already, we do D, dr delta g r equal to 0, okay. And what do I do now? Well, I get, I do this. So, I uh, writing little big, I should write little small. So, when I do that, I get minus uh, 3 3 cancels this 3 and I get 4 I get uh, minus 4 pi r square uh, delta g v and I get that plus 8 pi r gamma equal to 0, right. Now, one of them r is equal to 0 is the solution, part of the reason because this is the minimum. So, r equal to 0 is the solution, that is not the solution you want. So, we then uh, divide by r so, this goes out and this become R, okay. Now, these R now become my R star. I now, the, the other second solution is R star and that, that is now given by R star by 2 gamma by delta G V. So, these R star. The beautiful expression. So, this is the radius uh, a expression of the critical radius. Now, what I want to do? I want to put this value uh, of uh, R star into this. So, now I want to do by find this barrier. So, now I put it uh, made it R star, okay, and I put R star 2 gamma by delta GVQ here. I will use the same equation, excuse me, but that will work out beautifully. So, 2 gamma cube and now I will put uh, Okay, so now uh, you get 8 and 32 by 3, here you get 16 by 3 and uh, delta G V, this delta G V cancels one of the delta G V here uh, and you get gamma cube by delta G V square back in the, so now I get the following expression. So, these are the two very important expressions. This theory of nucleation is called Baker Doring. Let me tell you, this also the theory was used in uh, nuclear fission and many, many uh, across the condensed matter uh, physics and chemistry. It is amazing, important, and uh, beautiful thing. So, basically, what we have done? We have done uh, a uh, considered a uh, combination of surface term and the bulk term and I just wrote down a very simple expression. Surface tension is known, so is 
delta G V is known because I can calculate the free energy of the old and the new phase. I can come from the old phase and I can come from the new phase and I can calculate the, uh, the free energy things by standard free energy calculations. I can do that by integrating one specific heat. That is the way we get set up the problems that uh, I give you enthalpy, I give you specific heat and you calculate the free energy, you know that can be done. So, free energy of these phases are fairly well known and there are many, many, many fittings also available to these things. So, we know delta G V, we know the surface tension and uh, there are certain uh, approximations and we will talk about that. Uh, but since this is that my course for uh, M2 for beginners essentially, uh, we will probably minimize the criticism of a theory of the scale and we will uh, uh, discuss of course. Now, uh, but the I want you to appreciate the generality of the concepts that are involved, it is very common generally and at the end of the day we come out with certain beautiful, uh, beautiful expressions and which are very widely used, very, very widely used. So, when you say or you hear the term nucleation is thermo thermodynamically controlled or kinetically controlled all this kind of a thing, then you know many times what is talking about nucleation that, uh, that it, it, if it follows with low barrier pathway uh, even though a state is thermodynamically more stable uh, that we will we'll do now oh, uh, 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 another very beautiful thing we will do uh, just amazing uh, important things uh, not usually covered in textbooks but we will do is the Ostwald step rule and extremely important in present day scenario of uh, uh, solid state synthesis. So, uh, so those with thermodynamic control, kinetic control, all these things are essentially we are talking of nucleation. And uh, so these are the two equations I just derived. Uh, so this is the size of the critical nucleus, and this is the barrier of the you know very beautiful equation two gamma of delta G V. We all all, all uh, almost know this by by memory. Okay. So now. How do I do that? Um, uh, how do I do now? So, how, oh, 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 I have a, a, a situation like that, and this is my free energy barrier delta G star, my R star. Now, you ask me what is the what is the rate? How do I calculate the rate of nucleation Rn? How do I calculate that? Ask a chemist that I have a barrier, I have to go at the barrier. Uh, a chemist will immediately say, ah, I know, if there is a activation barrier, I know what is activation barrier, it is delta G star by KBT, I know that, okay. Well and good, then what is the P factor? So, this part chemist will do, then the chemist will scratch his head, aha. Uh -huh. I am used to do transition state theory. If I have a barrier, I have a situation like that, I write rate k equal to k Boltzmann factor by Boltzmann h, Boltzmann factor times temperature by Planck constant e to the power minus delta e star uh, by e star. Uh, E star by uh, KBT. I know that this has been taught to me from school days that this is the rate of barrier crossing. Can I do it here? Okay. Uh, so, this is a Boltzmann factor, the weight of the probability that the particle is at top that gives you this term that cannot go wrong, this has to be correct. Then, uh, but how do I get this term? I will do a chemical kind is a little bit somewhere down in towards the end of our road because we take a bond and we say okay the bond breaks and the bond is a frequency a, 
uh, nu and h nu and that is about thermal energy kbd and then say ok nu is the frequency of breaking is kbd by h that is how we do it. Then how do I do it here? How do I do it here? Well, we do in a way not to different. We will do in a way which is essentially follows this uh, logic, but in the process we do something really extremely beautiful which is very much like chemical kinetics and it turns out what we do is a chemical kinetic is a form of chemical kinetics and again the guy who did it is a nuclear physicist, very famous nuclear physicist named Zelovich. And what he did here was essentially in the atomic bomb that uh, same thing used in, 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 in chain reaction and it, it will do a very chain reaction and in, in, in fission and uh, this uh, beautiful uh, stuff. So, we will we'll, we'll, we'll stop it here and uh, in the next class we will we'll be doing the Zeldovich correction and finish the nucleation theory.